Uh, we do have time for uh, uh, maybe one question for each of our speakers. And uh, for Dr. Nato, I did get a question on what are some key considerations to think about when applying an indigenous evaluation framework? Yeah, so I'll just say that, um, you know, there's been some talk about uh, the having frameworks, you know, accessible and being able to apply them. And a few years ago at a AEA, um, I presented with tribal and state partners. And at the end of it, um, someone in the audience said, hey, I, I don't have a question, but a comment, you know, at the end of all our questions. And here was Dr. Joan LaFrance, one of the author for the Indigenous Evaluation Frameworks. And she told me, she said, I really like what you guys did with this framework. And the, the, the whole thing that that with a framework, it's it's just a framework. It's a guidance for how how things to consider when you do the work, but it doesn't tell you how to do the work. Um, that's the good and bad thing. Uh, for me, it was a good thing because it gave me lots of flexibility, allowed me to be innovative, and it allowed for flexibility for different application with the various tribes. Um, so it was a really a good fit. Um, when we're talking about the cultural values too, you know, not just identifying cultural values from those tribes was important, but we actually asked them to translate those values um, uh, for application in applying an indigenous evaluation framework. And that changed the conversation and really made their work come to life. Um, another thing that was, uh, that was really key was um, having the community and allowing them to identify how they would like to measure uh, the impact that they were having. Um, and we said, hey, pick one measurable impact and we'll work around that. And that was that was a very successful uh, approach. And how they defined its success, we created a glossary of terms. So very important with every project that you're working on because the way that things are defined varies across institutions. It also varies across tribes. So having that uh, point and that working point that everybody's on the same page is so very important. Um, and the probably most important is just um, honoring the process of, of uh, doing evaluation. When we, um, when we did evaluate, when we created and applied this evaluation framework with tribes, we did reverse logic modeling um, on a big, you know, wall. And we started with our outcomes and we worked backwards. And the, the art of reframing the work that was being done was so very important because the tribes were doing so many activities that could actually lead to the outcome of interest for um, the state, that the state long-term impact that the state was interested in, but they didn't know that all of these activities were tied to this long-term outcome. And over half of the activities that they identified weren't even on their work plans with the state. So I think that we're missing a lot of information and that it, and we can take a different approach for identifying the, the good work that communities uh, are doing and re reframing the impacts that they're having in their communities and elevating their voice. Great, and, and it speaks to the need for effective community engagement. All right, for, for Dr. Thomas, and thinking of race as a variable, can you share an example of where using race in the data set might actually be detrimental to the go, uh, goals of fostering health equity? Okay, well, I would say using race and, and presenting those results without providing appropriate context. Uh, and I'm actually thinking of a COVID related example where those early, you know, those early on data and charts that oftentimes they're reports that we generate, but people just look at the tables and charts sometimes. And so the tables and chart that show these big disparities between, you know, white populations, African-American populations. And that was what people saw. And there was, a elected official who saw that information and say, oh, we see these big differences between, you know, uh, you know, COVID related illnesses and deaths among black people versus white people. Could that be because, you know, black people don't wash their hands as much as white people? And I mean, so, you know, so sometimes people just make these you know, if, if the evaluator doesn't provide that context and then there is a uh, and some of the folks at the Urban Institute, they're really talking about how we actually present data from an equity focused lens. We don't always have to have our charts with Black, Black, Asian, Native Americans. We may have charts that with, you know, looking at different segments of the white population and then have a separate chart with different segments of the black population. Uh, so sometimes it is not necessary to, to, to do comparative, to present data in a comparative 
framework. You have to think about what is the purpose for the information that you're disseminating. Because sometimes if you just do that comparative you know, framework, it can be more stigmatizing than illuminating. Excellent example. Thank you so much, Dr. Thomas. All right, and uh, last question for our, our panel, for Dr. Stinson. Uh, there's a question that says, I understand you um, wanted to get a diverse pool of individuals. However, I would like to know what mechanisms were in place to address medical distrust to pull in that diverse group. Yeah, that's the, you know, that's the age old quandary, you know, uh, in that, uh, um, you know, whenever there is a, a need to, to, to uh, run a clinical trial out in communities, you know, the, the uh, pharmaceutical country, the academic institution goes out there and say, trust us this time, you know, uh, come in and sign up. And, and one of the things that, that, that um, uh, we think is very important and what we try to do, you know, uh, in these communities under SEAL is, is to, to, to get these teams out, get the academic institution out, work with the community and doing things to engender trustworthiness before you even ask anybody, please, can you sign uh, on to a, any particular, you know, clinical trial? And so we, we just think that that was, was uh, so uh, important uh, as, as, as building that relationship, you know, um, creating, you know, that trust, not by what you say, by what you do, you know, and then having some real informed consent, you know, in, in, in the discussions with individuals uh, when um, you know you're recruiting for the clinic, clinical trials, but it's but it's doing things to show that you are trustworthy um, before you even need anyone uh, to be a part of a, a research trial. Wonderful way to end this this wonderful uh, 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 session, and 